So good afternoon, everyone. Once again, started. So uh, I think uh, today's topic is very different. It is Dapper. So it's distributed application runtime. Not sure how many of you heard about it because uh, relatively new topic uh, in open source world. Uh, almost three year old uh, project to CNCF. It is a uh, incubating incubating pro CNCF Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and now it, from last two three years, it's taking really traction. And as you can see, this is basically uh, we use Dapper to build the distributed application faster. So it's all about you know distributed application. So kind of a advanced topic. So just a kind of a heads up, uh, you know, prerequisite or I understand or uh, you know target audience are kind of at least well aware about the microservice architecture, uh, some of the patterns, uh, <clears throat> majorly the Docker Kubernetes part of it, some of the container stuff, and you know. How we build the event driven architecture basically, or how do we build the event driven application? Okay, so that way it will be easy for you to understand. Uh, okay, so I'm on my first slide, and uh, I think as I talked about, right? So, Dapper is all about distributed application runtime, right? So, it's all about for distributed application. So, let's understand distributed application. We all know that, but just to understand, just to give a high level idea. So we all know distributed application, right? As you can see my screen, it's all about uh, the application which runs on multiple devices together to achieve a common goal. And uh, it's spread across various computational nodes, right? And typically, you know, it typically communicate with various mechanism. Messages is one of the uh, major way to communicate. And of course, they have a shared objective. So just uh, if you look at the distributed application workflow, <clears throat> over here you can see Shopping cart, notifications, checkout, payment, inventory, shipping are some of these applications. It's microservices, or you can assume it's application. And they are talking to each other via message. Okay. So this is a standard distributed application workflow. Now, uh, if you look at as a developer, right, what are the challenges? If I'll ask you to build a distributed application, uh, of course, you're a new developer, let's say. What kind of challenges you will face, or what kind of, let's say, uh, difficulties you'll face. So that's always a, you know, gray area. So let, let's, so let's move forward. So the first challenge general developer faces is this frustration. So as you can see my screen, if uh, there are new developers or they don't have, right, in various, uh, you know, microservices development, service orchestration, and all the major challenge is how do we orchestrate services? So you can see how do I orchestrate business logic across services, right? There are multiple services. I don't know how the checkout service uh, and the notification service or inventory service will work together. Okay, what is the dependency? How can I take some logic from this service and take some logic from this service, aggregate the logic over here and, you know, pass on the, lo the final output to, let's say, shipping service, right? So the orchestration is always one of the challenge in the distributed application development. If I'll move forward, Another challenge is the tracing, observability, monitoring, right? How do I keep a trace on the application, right? So there's another challenge. If you can see how can this request across services and message brokers, right? So in a complex application architecture, there are various messages, various brokers, right? And you don't understand how can I keep a track on this? How can I see what is working fine? What is not working fine? How many services are up and running? There are, uh, you know, hundreds of questions which comes to your mind. So that is another problem. Uh, while we work on distributed application, kind of a tracing, right? It is typically like an observer. If I move forward, another very interesting challenge is, of course, access control. As a developer, you don't know how do you configure access to services and other resources. Access is required, right? To what kind of read, write, or execute, or there are different permissions. There are different security aspects. There are different walls. So you don't understand now, you don't know exactly what are the best ways, best practices to give the access controller to use the access control. Because it's not a right? distributed architecture are generally complex in nature as compared to normal architecture, where you definitely have multiple services, multiple backend uh, components, downstream systems, right? So, so that's where the access control also become one of the challenge. If I will move forward, resiliency, the fourth part of it. We all know about resiliency, it's typically how do I handle failed calls and perform retries, right? So, I mean, there are mechanisms for if something fails, you retry it at three times, five times, and retry interval should be this, right? There are 
different API has a different uh, mechanism. But as a developer, have solid experience, right? You will always face problem, and you don't want to handle this. Honestly, you feel, boss, I don't know how to handle this. You wish somebody, you know, would have handled for you. So that is another for developing distributed application. Now, about all the challenges. So finally, all these challenges lead to, you know, the microservices development is in one area. So when I am talking about distributed application, majorly I am talking about services based application where we have various services and the entire uh, distribution is uh, among the components right so finally all these challenges and that's the reason you know is is driving developers crazy right so developers sometimes feels uh, so many services development the older monolith was good you know we know everything it was always all well defined but now it looks like there are hiccups so that is always a problem with our distributed application development or you can say microservices development which is kind of a major use case of distributed uh, app workflow so i talked about it so communication security scalability operation complexity are we talked about it major challenge even if you talk about runtime right so runtime engine i'm talking about there are very limited tools available you know and runtimes available to build your application very few tools you don't know the tools or tools are not compatible with one language some tools are compatible for java not for .NET, not for Go, not for Python, or vice versa. And then, of course, as I told, the limited language support. So, not all tools will provide support to all languages. And then, of course, uh, you know, the tools runtime have very they have very specific infrastructure, uh, you know, kind of a components or very specific solutions. No, they will not give you entire solution. So, those are the problems uh, what we feel as of now, and the problem is deeper or topic for today. Distributed application runtime for distributed AP stands for application and R stands for runtime. Sometimes people say distributed application platform runtime as well, but officially it's distributed application runtime. Uh, we call it Dapper as the future of microservice communication. So why I'm saying communication? Because the entire focus is the problem I'm facing while developing microservices, majorly the communication among services, right? with respect to their state maintenance or their retries or failovers, resiliencies, security, how to overcome that. So the answer lies in Dapper. That's where uh, we'll discuss today. As you can see, Dapper makes microservices development very simple and productive. So that's the goal of Dapper. And why? It provides API basically to simplify your connectivity. Okay. So this is what it is. Now let me quickly move forward. And uh, this is Basically, Dapper.io, the uh, application, the site is Dapper.io. You all can have a look and see the site. It's standard uh, site available. And it is one of the CNCF project. It's an incubating project. I will show you on CNCF page as well. <clears throat> and you can see this is API for, so Dapper is API for building secure and reliable microservices. So it provides you uh, various way to communicate. It provides you various components. We are calling it, we'll call it building blocks in future. Blocks. Y API, which will help you to build these services and try to take most of your pain, basically, you know, the, the pain I talked about. Okay. Some of the use cases you can see. Uh, now, let's uh, learn more about Depper, some introduction. So it, I think, as I talked about, right, it is not a very old project started, uh, you know, it was accepted in CNCF on 2021, so hardly uh, three years now at uh, incubating. Uh, it is a self hosted uh, project. The open source project, of course, gives you, it works through API and the API we call building block. So building block is a very common term in Dapper. Okay. And the building block is something which is going to simplify your microservices connectivity. So we'll talk on building blocks. We'll talk on what all building blocks are available, how to implement those building blocks and how can we make our microservices development faster. And you can say, you know, the API I was talked about, the API is available for communication, state maintenance, workflows, and so many other things. Okay. Uh, and good part is all these APIs, the, the, you know, the building blocks, they cover the entire best practices. So they have written, uh, of course, using the best standards, architectures, security standards, so that you don't bother about, right? Whether you followed the right practice, uh, underlying components ensure that they follow the best practices and guideline. So that's what it typically builds for security, resiliency, and observability. So or focus on code, right? So that is the goal of Depper. You focus only on your code, 
rest everything you leave it to us and we will try to take care of most of the stuff right that the most heavy loading work or you can say task or you can say peripheral task okay and uh, typically you know 20 developer productivity is improvement is what deper claims okay and uh, i think we have one use case in our unit molina molina where we have implemented deper so i think they are and they are also liking the uh, deper uh, features and of course out of the box support so i'll talk on feature but typically workflows pub sub state management secret store configuration bindings this locking security and cryptography a lot of stuff which will will be deper so i'll move forward and i'll i'll just try to show a video so, so please have a look see this video and then you'll get some uh, idea about it let me run the play the video okay here you go as a developer you're asked to create resilient scalable distributed applications as microservices but you face the same challenges over and over again challenges such as recovering state after failures managing secrets or discovering and securely calling other microservices what if there was a solution that allowed you to focus only on building your application and not solving these distributed system challenges that's where dapper comes in the distributed application runtime it's an event-driven, portable runtime for easily building microservices on cloud or edge. Dapper meets you where you are today. You can use Dapper with any language, on any, and run anywhere. At the heart of Dapper are building blocks that encapsulate industry best practices to simplify the challenges faced when building microservices. Through building blocks such as service-to-service -service invocation, state management, or pub-sub messaging, Dapper provides consistent APIs, abstracting away the implementation details and keeping your code simple and portable. You can use Dapper with your existing applications, starting with a single building block and incrementally adding more when needed. Let's say you're building an app that requires you to store state. Using the simple state management API, you can quickly create long-running, resilient, stateful services. Dapper does the heavy lifting for you. Your code remains simple and agnostic to any specific store implementation, and you can easily swap out what's under the hood without changing your code. And just to make life a little bit easier, Dapper provides extensive security and observability by default, encrypting requests between services and integrating with standards such as open telemetry for tracing, metrics, and logs that can be visualized by any monitoring tool. So, how does it work? Dapper runs alongside your application as a sidecar. Whether on your local dev box, on an edge device, or in the cloud. When hosting your application on Kubernetes, Dapper runs as another container in your application's pods. And when your application scales, Dapper scales with it. Dapper is an open source project with a growing worldwide community of developers working together. Want to learn more? Simply get started at dapper.io. Okay, so hope you're able to see the video. Can you give me a thumbs up if you saw the video? What's some idea? Just to get a response from you guys. Okay, thank you. Okay. Great. Thanks for response. So I think, so now we got, uh, hope now we got a basic idea about what is Dapper and why do we use it? Of course, to solve the distributed uh, application problems. Now quickly I'll move forward in the interest of time. So, you know, I, if you talked, I talked about building blocks. So Dapper has various building blocks. Uh, exactly how to use Dapper? What are the ways, how, what are the offerings? So let's talk about that. So Dapper building blocks is a very important thing. You can see on my slide, uh, almost 11 building over here these building blocks are the component you can say or that's where that provides api Dapper provides api for all these major building blocks and if you can see the blocks, so if you look at building blocks uh typically uh typically in one for what format so you can directly use any of the building block we'll talk on the building blocks uh, as well in detail just like an api so you can call your application with http or grpc api from your code use one or this component so if you want to uh, let's say, for example, service to service invocation, very standard use case where you are building a microservice uh, architecture and you talk to another services, service to service invocation. So one way is directly calling services, but of course, you will, there are challenges, there are issues, right? So 
use service to service invocation component which is available within diaper as a building block it will help you you see perform direct source secure service to service method calls publication pops up very prominent pattern we all know even in architecture we all know kafka or rabbit mq right so if you are using pops up mostly we are using any of the architecture right so uh, you use dapper pops up building block okay every building block will come will give you apis you need to use that api building block as a as a kind of a binary in your code and then start using those component classes functions and then dapper will take care of rest of the other thing workflows state management bindings actors actors again if you know the microservices one of the which typically uses for concurrency secrets configuration distributed locking for for security cryptography and you know various scheduling almost for all these 11 building blocks dapper has a component okay we will see two or three in detail uh, with more you know some examples but we, we won't be able to cover all but yeah this is is all 11 building blocks build the dapper so if you want to understand what is dapper dapper is all about these building blocks okay and uh, every building block is as i talked about this an api you call from your application okay uh before i move forward that is very important statement how dapper works so i think you would have seen that video as well dapper injects a site which is a container or process to each compute unit okay so sidecar is very important word over here because the entire uh, in next slides uh, you know next discussion will use the words so sidecar typically you know you know a unit attached to your bike uh, typically that what we remember right sidecar is typically a pattern it's a microservices design pattern is nothing but adding another uh, secondary container or a process or a unit to your uh, primary process okay in secondary process or container will take care of all the peripheral work and main main application can take care of major uh, application work right so car is all about let let's talk more on sidecar here we go so dapper uses sidecar pattern you see what is sidecar just try to understand this is very important because usage of dapper is based on how sidecar works okay and see sir uh, again standard uh, uh, workflow there are various processes you see shopping cart checkout payment shipping right and you see there are sidecar attached to each process or each application so the so why i am saying sidecar because those are the another secondary process or secondary unit which is attached to your primary unit okay so you see all these instances so if you have let's say all these services you have side each service or each component okay or each unit and you see 1 2 3 4 5 sidecar right and you see this is an example of sidecar so finally you can also refer sidecar as supporting processes okay or as services attached to your main services okay and that is where now what is the use of sidecar what kind of peripheral work they will do i think we have discussed in the brief but let's let's see more on that so before that i think just want to just uh, talk let's say talk on 2 minutes since what to sidecar i think if you microservices you would be aware about sidecar pattern so typically is a design pattern it helps you you know involving the deployment of secondary containers or sidecar along with your primary services or your microservices instances right and these sidecars are typically it every task i think you know we talked about of the task so logging proxy configuration security stuff state management right all these are the uh, auxiliary tasks or secondary tasks so you see with each primary application we will attach a sidecar okay and over here sidecar is nothing but a dapper instance or a dapper unit or a dapper process so that the entire communication will not be direct it will be via dapper via sidecar okay so a side typically i mean uh, hope so you are aware about uh, the proxy right we use any uh, api gateway or proxy so all, all call goes to proxy and proxy redirected to the right place and then you know get back to it so you are behind proxy so similarly over here you are behind sidecar which is nothing but a dapper instance okay and as you can see uh, um, sidecar is not like majorly you can connect it uh, work with your application wherever your application is okay so i think now you know the sidecar let me move forward okay so this is a very important uh, slide uh, it will give you end to end view as to what dapper is all about whatever we have learned so far so this is from development to hosting if you look at the overall uh, dapper architecture you can see on top we have various runtime be it node python dotnet go 
Rust, Java, C++, PHP, all, almost all uh, languages are supported. That means we have a SDK available uh, from Dapper. So you can say we have uh, SDK from Dapper, .NET SDK for, from Dapper, or Dapper Java SDK, Dapper PHP SDK. So that, so that means it has support to all clients, all languages. Okay. And a app using any of the language. When you're developing app, of course, you would like to deploy your app on uh, various on-prem or cloud containers, or you want to integrate with your backend systems, databases, services, right? So you see in between, you know, in between the intermediate layer is the dapper. Okay. So you're talking to your services, uh, to your in to provider for various needs. You will talk via dapper. Okay. Via dapper building blocks, because dapper is a, uh, you know, kind of a runtime environment, but finally down the line, it will give you building blocks. Okay. And how do you call building blocks via HTTP or GRPC API standard way? You have to call from your any of the code or make an API call to Dapper and use any of the building block based on your requirement. Now, workflow building block for workflow needs, PubSub building block for PubSub needs, service invocation if you want to invoke another services, if you want to state, uh, state, uh, save the state of your object, you can do that. Act, uh, jobs, scheduling, configuration, secrets, binding, which is typically adapter, security, locking, middleware, everything, right? And find the cross-cutting concern. Observability, security, resiliency is by default added by the uh, Dapper. I talked about it, right? They have specific, uh, you know, offering available in their own uh, libraries, okay? And down the line, you put uh, these applications on or integrate on any cloud infrastructure, okay? So that here part of it and how you, you're gonna work, of course, as I talked about, every app, to attach a sidecar, inject a sidecar as a container or process to your compute unit. Okay. Finally, the, the sidecar, whatever we are calling a depper, they are going to interact with your event triggers and they are going to communicate with your compute unit and then give you, you know, final uh, basic discovery. Okay. So I'll take a pause over here. Uh, if any questions before we move forward, you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Uh, hi, it's Nishant. Uh, can you explain like how exactly Dapper has like, uh, how exactly Dapper has the whole infrastructure? The whole infrastructure. Sorry, uh, Nishant. Sorry, can you please repeat your question? Yeah, sure. Like, am I audible now? Sure. Like, yep, am I yep. audible now? So, can you repeat again? So, like, can just repeat again. How Dapper has the development? How Dapper has the development? How Dapper has the operating efficiency of the infrastructure? Efficiency of the infrastructure. Okay. So you're talking how. Dapper helps developer, is it? That is the question? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So I think, you know, I, as I talked about, right, I think uh, we talked about the theme. We are talking about distributed application runtime Dapper. And uh, before Dapper, if Dapper is not there, what we do? When we do the distributed application development, when we work on microservices application development, there are major challenges developer faces. Challenges I talked about, of course, uh, you know, the state management, the communication among various services, the security stuff, right? Down the line, you call various retries. If there is a service fail, how do you want to ensure that retries are there? Retries are there, right? And and then how do you trace your services? I mean, I'm talking about observability over here. How do you ensure the resiliency? How do you ensure the security stuff, right? So there are so many problems down the line, which is there. Now you have to have someone to solve your problem. So what I talk, Dapper is there to help you uh, with all the problem. Dapper is going to make your distributed application development easy, or it will solve your microservices development at least at some level so that you can only focus on code. You means the developer can only focus on code. Okay. Now, how Dapper will help? That's what we're talking about using the building blocks. Each building block will help you to achieve some of the objective, right? So, for example, no pops up, right? We are using Kafka, RabbitMQ, but if if I'll ask you, okay, let let me uh, directly call a Kafka queue. I don't know about standards from my application. How can I pass the parameters? How can I pass the actual retries? How can we give me the configuration, right? So what if if someone is there as an intermediate uh, helper or a process or a unit which will help me to do all these things and say, hey, you only call this API directly. Rest everything I'll take care. And that's how the PubSub, the entire event-driven uh, process for publishers, publisher subscriber will be easy for a developer. Similarly, for state management, if you are saving a state, you don't know, you can always save a state, right? We have various, let's say you are using Redis. 
now down the line in uh, in future another application is using some another different component some other application is another so that means three different applications are using three different state management component or technology how you gonna really ensure that down the line your service your code will only call one api i don't care down the line you are calling redis calling google firebase i have no idea i need someone who can help me so but someone who can use, create but we use for something but we use for something discovery yeah. service discovery oh. service yeah very good yeah oh. very very nice a good point discovery is one of the area i will talk on that because discovery i mean i'll i don't want to move forward i'll tell you the example uh, you know, I'll tell you example of uh, PubSub service invocation, the detail like where Dop De Depper is going to help. Bear with me for some more time, okay? Okay, uh, with this architecture, guys, let's move forward. Quickly, I'll move forward to the component. Now, this is where you will see Ocean. You know, if you look at, again, I'll go back. I'm talking about PubSub, I'm talking about state management, right? Those are some standard, uh, you know, or cross-cutting concern or some enterprise grade features. Now, how Depper can help? and what are the various areas language platform Depper can help? Look at this slide. This is a very important slide. Depper always gives, always, always support 100 plus integration. Depper gives me or help me with 100 plus integration. So far, I mean, it is still increasing. It's an open source project, guys. It's an open source project. I think somebody is asking. It is a, it is a, it is the whole source code is available on GitHub. It is maintained by Cloud Native Computing Foundation, CNCF. Okay, it is three year old project to CNCF and now it is very popular and I'll tell you who is using it statistics. But look at this slide. Now, why I'm showing you this slide. These are some of the examples Depper can help and definitely you will relate to your environment for sure. For example, state management. I think I just talked about state management, right? So I am using Redis, somebody is using DynamoDB, somebody is using, uh, DynamoDB, somebody is using Cassandra for state management. Okay. One application may use multiple state management or multiple application in a distributed environment can multiple state management technology, platform, libraries, tools, right? I don't want to really, uh, you know, get influence and I don't want to really deal with all. Who can Dapper? So what we are saying is, hey, I am, the, I am the developer. I am writing this app. I will only call a Dapper API and I will say, hey, I, I am calling a Dapper API and I am calling a Dapper state management API. That's it. Depper down the line will help me out with all these implementation. Okay, I will only call my, if I'm using Redis, what is best practice for Redis? What is best practice for Cassandra? Interchangeably, in future, Redis will change to Cassandra. I'm okay, I don't care because uh, I am behind Depper. I am I, I'm behind Depper. Depper is attached as a sidecar. Depper is doing say, state management for me, not I'm doing it directly, right? So down the line, Depper of all the pain. Publisher, subscriber, I think we talked about various things, right? Redis. Uh, you know, SQS or service bus or rabbit MQ, you use any implementation. Finally, Dapper will support all these things because down the line, Dapper code, the Dapper uh, library uh, support for these technology, these platform, these tools. Okay. It is increasing. They are adding more uh, components, more integration, but for now it is helpful for all of things. You can see all the major names are here. For AWS Secret Manager or your HashiCorp Vault or Azure Key Vault or GCP Secret Manager, you know, for configuration, locking, workflows, cryptography, and they are still evolving. So what I'm trying to say is, if in your application you are using any of the technology, let's say you are using RabbitMQ, okay, you directly attach, use Depper and you call Depper instance, Depper API via gRPC or uh, HTTPS request, and then let Depper handle your RabbitMQ stuff for you or configuration stuff for you. Okay, that is the power. We'll see that. We'll see some example. Let me move forward, guys. Okay, so I think now you know I'm talking about Depper will help, Depper will, but will help. Okay, so of course, and I'm talking about if you look at the various languages over here, right? Various languages I talked about in this uh, diagram. So Depper provides SDKs. That's the great thing. Depper SDKs are the easiest way to get into a Depper uh, in your application. So you can see. Uh, Depper has SDK for .NET, Java, Python, PHP, Go, C++, Rust, and some nine, eight to nine languages as of now. This is one example of where is Java SDK. You can go to the site and see the Java SDK, where you will find the Java SDK. Now, uh, if you are using, if you are a Java, Java developer working on a Java Spring Boot microservices based implementation, use uh, Depper Java SDK to make your life easy. If you are a data science guy, use Python else use .NET or, or JavaScript if you're using Angular React based application based on your application development, Depper available. So you don't bother about it. 
you just need to call Dapper API down the line based on some configuration. Dapper will ensure that it will give you uh, the right connectivity based on your inputs. So that is the power. Let me move forward. Okay, so now we are moving towards development guys. Just uh, so let's say, okay, so now we understood what is Dapper, what is Sidecar, what are the problems we are trying to solve. Now, how to develop, uh, how to use Dapper, you know, as a local development. No? How to use, log, uh, start with, uh, get started with Dapper. That's a uh, slide is all about. Standard three steps, Dapper CLI, Dapper init and Dapper run. You have to only, uh, you know, remember these three uh, commands give you complete uh, basic uh, installation of Dapper package. Dapper init will initialize most of the libraries container what is required. Okay, I think you can see example, Dapper init will initialize Redis container for you, Zipkin, Zipkin is for project for tracing, typically for observability, default component folder, placement, Dapper scheduler service container. So it will initialize everything for you, uh, you know, just a command in it, in it. And then you can run Dapper based on what, uh, of course, using API for whatever building block you are looking for. Okay. Major thing is remember Dapper requires Docker. So the, you know, prerequisite to run should you, you should have docker on your machine okay i mean without docker you can start it but most of the uh start okay even i don't have dapper on or sorry docker on my machine because infosys restricts docker at least so far i don't have that so i don't have full implementation i will show you a small part of it without dapper you can uh, install uh, uh, you know without docker you can install dapper but a slim version which will give you some features okay so overall you can see the diagram you install the docker desktop that's it run three commands cli init and run uh, you know for initialization uh, and then running your process and then you're good to go that's it okay so let me move forward yeah so the uh, now if somebody wants to get started you can start it get started with Dapper. so install the Dapper about docker is a prerequisite use the Dapper cli command there are standard uh, command is available you can use this command to uh, run the Dapper cli it's a powershell command this command you can use it and of course tell the uh, set the dapper cli uh, as a path variable okay that's important environment variable. once you run the cli the, this will install the dapper uh, on your laptop desktop and then you initialize it so initial thing but dapper init command it will initialize your dapper and it will uh, you know it runs as a sidecar right so typically it will install all the binaries on your local machine binaries we talked about whatever dapper will provide it creates an environment as well for you Okay, and then you can start using Dapper using Dapper run. For example, over here, I am using this command Dapper run and I am saying, hey, run the Dapper for my application. I am giving application ID, which is running on a specified port. Okay, so this is just a, I have, I, let's say I have a .NET application or Java application or Angular application. I am running the Dapper for that application on the specified port. So these are the three command. Now, uh, because let's say which for an example i would i'll use the state management building block over here i think the the state management so for that i have dapper state management api which is provided from Dapper. so how can i use that let's say i'm using redis for my state management so very standard uh, you know if you want to save a state object call this command standard you prove up uh, you know provide the key value pair and uh, of course your standard api uh, api definition okay and your state store whatever state store you have you will you will be able to save the object you means you are calling dapper but dapper state management api will help you to save the object okay you're not directly talking similarly if you want to get the object you will call this it will give you dapper uh, sidecar instance will give you the value from uh, of course using the state management api and then you can delete it as well this is an example this is like how uh, dapper will initialize it okay so let me Take a pause over here and now try to show you uh, how Dapper is running on my machine. With me, guys, can you please uh, raise your hand or give a thumbs up? Okay, thanks, Vivek. Okay, so I think guys, I'll, I'll quickly show you. You know, okay, so if you can see my uh, CMD command, you can see Dapper is installed. So uh, you know, I can check the Dapper minus version. Okay, I have already installed Dapper CLI. So Dapper minus version, it you can see the CLI version dot fourteen dot one, and if I would like to check the Dapper uh, installation, you I'll run Dapper minus H. So Dapper minus H will typically you see the Dapper, it will install the Dapper runtime on my uh, laptop. But unfortunately, I don't have Docker, so I won't be able to show you the processes because that requires Docker. Without Docker, you can't do most of the stuff. Okay, 
and these are the commands so you know you see the commands you can you know which you can use you can list out all the processes you invoke it publish you can run the command you can status uninstall upgrade version dashboard dashboard is a command which will show you all the running processes on your machine on your dapper okay so let me run dapper dashboard okay so you, you can say dapper dashboard this command uh, dapper dashboard on this prompt yeah you see the dapper dashboard you see the dapper dashboard I'm using Dapper dashboard. It will, it will, it will, it will, it will give me UI on on my local host, and it will show me all the process. Let me show you the UI. If you can see my screen, can you see the Dapper uh, dashboard screen? You see, it is running on 8080. It's a local uh, Dapper UI, which Dapper will initialize it uh, for your yeah. Thanks, Polo, uh, for your you know application. So you can see uh, this is a this is a React application basically. You can see component component unfortunately without docker you can't do anything so uh, else if you have docker you can always use, use state management pubsub or any secret manager and do some uh, hands on on this you see configuration but uh, but just to show you like this is a dashboard okay in a real uh, in a in a real manner it will show you all the components which you are using in your dapper let's say you are using four or five or five building blocks all the components along with the process will be available over here okay so this is a dapper dashboard okay and yeah, I was showing you Dapper, right? I mean, now I'm since we are here. This is CNCF project, and if you can, see, uh, Dapper is one of the uh, incubating project. It is here, okay, on Dapper site on CNCF. Okay, so let's move forward, guys. Uh, we talked about uh, how to use Dapper, how to install it, what are the problems it is solving. Now, where can we deploy? You you know, you can deploy it almost everywhere. So this is standard. Uh, you know, I think all the environments what you are talking about. So you can deploy a uh, dapper on any of the cloud uh, and good part I think that is where it is uh, most, uh, you know, kind of close to you on virtual machines or physical machine. Okay. So now let's see how we, you can deploy a uh, dapper on Kubernetes. I think are, I think fascinated about Kubernetes, right? So, okay, here we go. So this is a architecture diagram, how dapper can be deployed in Kubernetes cluster. Okay. So this again, standard processes, you can have a look. You know that in Kubernetes we have various pods, and uh, standard pattern is Dapper will inject a sidecar to each application. Over here, application is pod. So if you have let's say six or five pods, you have six or five Dapper instances, which is typically a sidecar. You see Dapper over there. Everywhere you have you see Dapper for various purposes. Okay. So and of course you can see the Dapper with the main pod over here. So idea is same. You initialize your, uh, you know, Kubernetes application, run the pods, attach, uh, you know, sidecar or Dapper instance uh, with the pods. Whenever you are talking to any application, of course, your microservice communication, communicate it via Dapper APIs, via Dapper state management API or a service service invocation API. Okay, that's the way, right? Don't directly talk. And then down the line, down the line, uh, Dapper will help you out. Okay, so for example. If Kubernetes uh, pods will scale in, scale out, Dapper will also scale in, scale out. That's a power. So it will, it will, it's a, it's a process. And of course, see that you can host on any component. Okay. So this is typically how Dapper uh, works on Kubernetes. We don't want to go in detail, but just if you are a Kubernetes developer, you can use Dapper or Kubernetes as well. It's an idea to talk on that. Community is very strong, guys. I think uh, CNCF. It's uh, one of the uh, powerful project now. It's three years old. You can see uh, almost number 12 in the largest CNC of project, 120 community components, 3K contributors, 7K discord members for, uh, for, um, you know, for, you know, helping you out. And of course, 700K plus Docker hub pull up month per, per month, because it's all with Docker. Okay. Unique views, GitHub star. So I think it is very popular and now it is becoming popular because of the microservices development challenges because of the distributed application development. Okay. So that's what it now people are started using it. So let me move forward. Who is contributing it? Infosys can contribute it. I know this is open source uh, program office. We are, we all are part of OSPO and we are proud to be really uh, part of uh, Hacked October Fest where we are trying to see the open source journey. These are the contributors guys. So, you know, even Hawaii, Microsoft, Amazon, they all are contributing to uh, Dapper. They are building, they are uh, ensuring that uh, they have the connection, they have the integration, they have the building block available for their components. So they all are working. You can also do that. And who is using Docker? It's not like it's very new. Even if it's three year old, most of the major players in industries are using Dapper. 
even in india hdfc is using dapper just for an example so i showed in the beginning ibm pwc intel all these folks are using dapper at some way or another so majorly even this killer we are on right they are that is also using dapper so they all are using dapper for various purposes but because down the line they all are you know uh, dealing with uh, distributed application okay uh quick polls i think will not go in the detail now you all can read it it's a self explanatory slide where uh, now you know what is the goal of dapper it is enabling developers life easy for any language it is solving the hard and somebody was asking about hard problem problems are about you know how do you really uh, use the building blocks can someone help me with various uh, uh, various uh, technology uh, cross cutting concern which is required for building an application it is vendor neutral so doesn't matter in aws gcp azure alibaba it will it will typically work on all consistency with open api it is embracing the extensibility right there are plug and play component okay so those are some of and moving to features uh, i'll not spend time on that but typically you can see it supports all programming languages why http and grpc i think we all are somehow using http and grpc so it's a easy way to call whatever you are doing just you need to call your dapper uh, you know via dapper api but it's multi cloud enabled and good part is very lightweight so if you will install the entire dapper on your machine 58 mb is the binary size that's it with 4 mb physical memory that's what that's it it's very lightweight runs as a sidecar you all know and what is the benefit of sidecar we saw that but typically it removes the need of sdks you don't want to bother about sdks you choose your language dapper for all you use the sdk its command i'll show you some examples how to write uh, how to use those commands for some of the stuff netgrep cli uh, it uh, again client for all uh, even driven pub some system you know i think state management secret management observability is inbuilt using the symmetry i think you would have seen in the video and natively runs on kubernetes okay so that's another good part of it so i'll again take a pause any questions before we move yeah hi i uh, have few questions this is a camera yeah. i see uh, some uh, overlaps in terms of functionality between dapper and istio yeah mm -hmm. do you think uh, uh, dapper can be a replacement for istio uh that's a very good and vast question i don't think so. So, I mean, Istio is there from long, right? Dapper started uh, feeling that, you're right, there are overlaps. You know, Istio is more mature as of now. Uh, Dapper is kind of a new guy in this world. But yeah, gradually things may be better. But for now, I would say still Istio is there. So, you can't, let's, let, you can't assume it's typically a service mesh, okay? Just like Istio. So, could be some part of his popular, some part is uh, overlapping. But still, I would say they are two different products. And uh, it will take some time to mature. In my view, do you see any possibility that can we use both the Istio and Dapper for? Uh, uh, I I I didn't it out. I don't. Yeah, I didn't try that combination. Uh, sorry for that. I I can't uh, tell you whether we we can use both. Should be, but I didn't use it. So, not sure. Okay. 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 Sorry, Madan. Uh, I was just thinking like like uh, the Istio when we are trying to keep projects right, it was always positive and negative with respect to the overhead, with respect to the overhead on why proxy, on why proxy. Yeah, yeah. So what is a typical so, what is a typical overhead of Dapper that we are talking about? That talking oh, about? Okay. So that's a very. It's around three percentage. Three percentage. Yeah, Madan. So let me answer, Madan, based on my uh, very, uh, I, I would say, some four or five months experience with Dapper as of now. You're right. I mean, see, when you say over application is small and you don't have, uh, you don't see a lot of interdependency, you know, multiple communication, downstream components, various integration, different technology languages. I don't think Dapper is required because you're not there. You are typically, you know, rather than you should avoid using any other, you know, component as a additional architecture component and build that complexity. But down the line, what I've seen is wherever there are very complex use cases and situations where there are various languages, different languages, diverse set of components and, you know, systems or various integrations, right? 
that's where it is making more sense. So I would say if based on the application complexity, we can decide and define whether we really need to introduce Dapper. I think that's what I'm like Molina, we have introduced it uh, because the use case was there. I mean, uh, I think we'll try to do that as well in a separate session. I think uh, so, but in the net net, uh, upon application complexity, uh, Madan, that's what I would like to summarize with. Essentially, essentially, we are saying that when there is complexity, there is uh, acceptance for the overhead. Yes, yes, because yeah, you're right. And for example, the building blocks I talked about, right? So wherever you you are, there are cases where you're using you are using multiple secret manager, multiple session management, multiple pub sub, big application like I don't know Vanguard or 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 a Bank of America, where you see multiple line of businesses are interacting, right? And you don't have any one common uh, uh, technology stack down the line. I think then. In those area, Draper will be helpful because it's going to really easy with various uh, integrations and various diverse set of technology. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, Madan, you have to unmute. Essentially, it's in a very good thing in a polycloud situation. Yeah, ah, yeah definitely. You're right. Polycloud is <laughs> that's what I mentioned the polycloud example. Because polycloud, is, polycloud. Yeah. Okay. Yes. yes. See, one advantage with Dapper is that if you have multiple applications that need a pub type or state management, any of the building blocks, we just, I mean, using Dapper, you can just plug in. So application can just yeah. plug in those building blocks instead of deploying each of those services for each application. It's a tedious. Correct, correct. Yep, yep. Okay, so I think quickly, I think in the interest of time, I'll quickly move forward. So I'll now I'll try. Two or three building blocks with some examples. We'll take state management, pub sub, and the service to service invocation. In the interest of time, I won't be able to cover other other building blocks that we can cover maybe in further sessions, which we can request from OSPO group. Okay. So quickly, the state management. I think I talked about state management. You can see how state management can be helpful. Um, again, you can use state management API to read, say, query your uh, key value pairs, your data via Dapper, and you can see over. Service, if you're calling, you are, you, you'll call a Dapper instance, a Dapper API, and then Dapper down the line will have a store management, uh, state store component, which will resolve your uh, query based on whatever implementation you're using. Okay. So that's a state management example. And down the line, somebody can, I think mother knows, right? So simple is fine, but complex situation is where state management uh, cases where Dapper will be helpful like this one, where you are setting the choices on concurrency control, data consistency, where you have bulk updates right with you where bulk updates are there based on your multiple requests various scenarios so all these scenario where bulk update or or delete or or add is on your multiple operation right those are the scenarios where state management api uh, from Dapper is going to be more helpful normal uh, key value get set is not a big deal but and of course the major implementation wherever the implementation is varying or changing or there are multiple implementation right and you need to get the express response from various uh, you know uh, product or various line of business down the line okay uh, okay this is an example guys i mean just a kind of a small coding you know this building block and this is a javascript sdk right so what i'm trying to show is over here is how to write how to use the javascript uh, dapper sdk for state management and how do you write a small uh, code snippet for saving and getting okay so typically the dapper client of course based on language support and provide your host and port name and then get the state from this and then you know save the state so you know it typically await clear client dot state dot save is you will be able to save your state okay and this state can be fetch using of course get straight so this is standard javascript but now rather than the normal coding you are using dapper client so the, the whole libraries is 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 driven from dapper so you are using dapper specific sdk code okay that are development kit basically uh let's move to second uh, invoke a uh, second uh, building block service to service invocation uh, i think we talked about it i think uh, somebody asked it i and i have the you know i said you please stay so just look at this slide you will get the answer so when we are talking with multiple services how can we reliably and securely communicate with each others you know typically this is always a challenge and these are the problem i was referring to right which Dapper will help service discovery how do i discover my different services discovery is always a problem until you have a discovery uh, api or to discover right Standardizing your API call between services. How can I standardize the various services? How between services among services? Intercommunication. You always talk it like how do I call services securely and based on uh, you know access control level? Which method needs to call? Mitigating request timeout of failure. If there is a failure, how do I mitigate it? What are the transient error right? And then implementing observability and tracing. You, there is no way to observe you know trace and uh, track your stuff. 
so these are which generally uh, comes down for a developer in a service to service invocation in an environment and that's where dapper shines over here and it addresses challenges and how can you do that dapper has a service invocation api you uh, which typically uses a reverse proxy we all know what it, which holds built in service discovery which you can use it down the line it also has distributed tracing there is a uh, you know a, a tool called uh, zepkin metrics error handling encryption and more so typically you invoke dapper api on dapper instance okay based on your uh, stuff dapper instance will discover and communicate with each other so dapper will in oral communication i will show the example as well this example you can see uh, this is very good workflow as to how dapper can help uh, in service to service invocation you see service a and service b service a wants to talk to service b the direct communication is always there but there are challenges we know that so see service a has a dapper sidecar service b has a dapper sidecar they are talking via dapper sidecar uh, via dapper service a will call dapper uh, instance which is a process and dapper will call uh, another dapper instance which is part of service b and this will invoke uh, this will find the name resolution component and find the name of service b and this instance will call service b service b will resolve your query and get the answer to uh, forward the answer to this dapper uh, sidecar and this will forward to this dapper and finally this will send response back to service a so this is an example as to how you can invoke multi services without any issues securely via dapper okay and just an example, uh, I mean, standard code as to JavaScript SDK again. So how can you use it? You are you use the Dapper host and response and you uh, fetch the URL and then pass on your Dapper application ID and then try to process it. So typically, this is how you can invoke services to services in Dapper. Okay. Third is the and last uh, building block for today is PubSub. Very, very popular. We know, right? Communicate with each other via messages. So, you know, down the line problems are there, right? We talked about it queuing or, you know, how do we fill your delivery and all that, right? For example, you're in Kafka and all that. So all these are the problem and so again, Dapper shines here as well. It helps you via, you know, same, it has a Dapper PubSub building block API. That is the name you use that API and you let Dapper do everything. I will show you that uh, diagram that will be easy. Yeah, this diagram, you see the diagram now. Uh, there's a Dapper PubSub API building block example. There's a publisher, the subscriber. You see, and in between there are components. There are four or five components, could be more. Dapper can support any Redis or, you know, you have your net streaming or your Azure service bus or GCP PubSub, right? Anything. So over here again, uh, all the, the cart publisher and these are the services. So you see Dapper has already subscribed uh, your services. So, so rather than, so Dapper is subscribing on behalf of you. You can see to receive the messages on topic, Dapper subscribe to the PubSub component on your. So every service is subscribed by Dapper. Okay. You see the su subscriber Dapper. Now, uh, cart will call a Dapper instance. Okay. Based on the configuration, this Dapper will find out it is Redis or GCP or something else. It will invoke the right component. And then down will call another Dapper instance, which will have this shipping and for email, whatever, wherever you subscribe, if there is a message for you, Dapper will be invoked will get the response and then down the line Dapper will send back the response to the caller. So that's typically an example of how uh, Dapper API can work. So I'll take a pause over here guys. And uh, yeah, there's an example again, publish and something. I think we talked about it. This is ja JavaScript SDK again, Dapper client, you use it and use the standard PubSub method for publishing and subscriber, there's a method called subscribe. Okay. And these are the resources for Dapper. I think it is a quick uh, intro to have more sessions with hands-on.